Hey everyone, Jan here, coding with Jan.com. Shopify Functions, a powerful new way to extend or customize Shopify features by writing your own backend code. And yes, you've heard that right. For the first time ever, Shopify opens up parts of the backend logic for us developers. Now saying it like that probably also raises a few questions, like how does it all work exactly? What do I even mean by backend logic? How are functions different from traditional apps? And how can we get started? But no worries, my friend, because coincidentally, that's exactly what we are going over today. And I really hope you find some value in this. So then let's have a look. All right, so then let's get started by answering the how does this all work? And therefore, let's first consider the typical dev stack, which was also beautifully illustrated on the Shopify devs channel. So we can think about a store in three simple layers. First of all, we have the database. So that's where all the data is stored, like historic orders, customers, the products that have been created, all the store settings, and yeah, just everything or every bit of data that needs to be saved or stored somewhere. On top of that, we then have the backend. So this is where the website logic runs, like managing products, incoming orders, new customers get created, and so on and so forth, like all the behind the scenes logic. And the backend also writes the corresponding data into the database or reads it from there. Like for example, if you were to delete a product on the backend, it would also be deleted in the database, right? So that's just one example of the logic that's implemented behind the scenes. On top of the backend, we then also find the front end, which is usually built by using a theme, but it could also be a custom storefront completely built from scratch. And this is where we showcase our products or different data from the store. So the front end could be called the presentation layer. Now in each of these layers, there are also different technologies that allow us to make customizations or work with the available data. Like for example, on the front end, we could use liquid or hydrogen. And the database is directly accessible through the Shopify API. Now historically, the only thing where we couldn't make any changes or augment anything is the backend logic. And it's also pretty much where apps would come into play because they could implement your own routines, write your own logic, and then via the API, you could still read and write data from or to the database. So it's kind of similar to what the backend does and apps already provide a great flexible way of extending the native features, but they also come with a few drawbacks. First of all, there are certain parts and areas of a store that you just can't reach by using normal apps. Like for example, the checkout discount logic or the checkout shipping logic because you can't just inject code right there. And that's already one of the key differences between the new functions and then traditional apps, because with the new functions, you will be able to reach these areas. And actually the checkout discount logic is the first place where the backend logic is opened up. And then other key areas will follow over time. And I will also try to add a small list of like upcoming areas somewhere here on the side. The second drawback with traditional apps is that you would need to figure out your own hosting which in and of itself is not too much of a problem because it's actually not too difficult. But if your app solves some time critical tasks, then you might face some issues with limited bandwidth if your server can't scale up that quickly. And that's actually very important because with Shopify websites, scalability is never an issue. You can have like 10 visitors per hour, but you can also have 100,000 and the website just doesn't crash. And that's actually funny because while I was still working in the agency, we had tons of clients who went to the German equivalent of the show Shark Tank. So this is like people would present their product ideas, searching for investors. And then all these websites had huge traffic spikes because it was like broadcasted on television during prime time. And then our websites never had a problem with that because Shopify takes care automatically. But other WordPress websites were like crashing left and right and developers would be like crawling through the pieces that have once been called their website, begging us like, hey guys, how did you build these websites? And we were like playing it cool. Yeah, yeah just, just use Shopify, whatever. <laughs> and I mean, of course, slightly overplayed here, but based on true story, man, we had a good time working in the agency. But anyways, what I'm trying to say here is that if your app solves a time critical task, then it shouldn't be the bottleneck of the website and you just have to ensure performance. And that's also a new major benefit with Shopify functions because they literally run on Shopify's infrastructure and can execute in less than five milliseconds. And they also scale up yeah, to pretty much the largest sale events on the planet. So how cool is that? All right, now the last key difference I think you should be aware of is that with Shopify functions, we can now seamlessly integrate our settings into the admin dashboard. So for example, if we're talking about a discount function, 
You can also have the settings or the interface to configure your function right at the discounts, where it actually makes most sense. And with traditional apps, you would always have to go into the apps tab, then bring up your app and then configure everything there. So I think that's an improvement. However, it's very important to understand that the settings for your functions or the interface to configure everything still has to be served through your own server. So that's exactly the same as with traditional apps. And only the time critical scripts will actually run on Shopify's infrastructure. So that's the difference here. And yeah, I think it's also important to understand that Shopify functions are installed through normal apps. So that's a commonality. You can share and distribute everything via the App Store, which is awesome because it's like a super large audience. And yeah, maybe the best way to think about them is that Shopify functions are not a completely different thing. It's more like a new feature or something you can add to apps. And if that was confusing by any means, let's have a look at the following lifecycle diagram because that will make things crystal clear. All right, so it all starts with the app developer who adds a function to an app. Then when everything is ready, you can deploy the app so that a merchant can install the app on the store. And it's also where you would configure everything using the settings. And these settings come from your app server. Then when everything is configured, the app developer or the app makes an API call with the current configuration of that function. So this is kind of where the function gets uploaded to Shopify's infrastructure. And then when a customer interacts with the website, let's say adds a product to the cart, that's where your function gets actually executed on Shopify's infrastructure. And I think this diagram is the best overview you can get. And it's also available in the Shopify docs. And if you're looking for that, the link is in the description. Okay, so now that we have a high level understanding of how everything works, and I know there's a lot of information to take in, also takes me quite a bit to do these summaries here. Um, but now that we understand that, the question would be, how can we practically get started? What are the best first steps? And first of all, we need to understand that Shopify functions are not any different from like normal functions we know from programming. Yeah, you have an input, then you have the actual function where you write the logic and then an output. And in order to get started, you just need a few things up front. So first of all, you have to pick a language that can be compiled to WebAssembly. So this can be any language such as Rust, Go, AssemblyScript, and also a few others. But when picking others, you have to pay attention to file size because your compiled function cannot exceed 256 kilobytes. That's important. Yeah, because as we mentioned earlier, Shopify deeply cares about performance and the functions have to be fast. Then you also need a package manager such as Yarn or NPM, an ngrok account, a Shopify partner account. So this is pretty much the same as the same requirements as if you're building traditional apps. And then you also need a development store, which at the time I'm recording this still has to be under the developer preview for checkout extensions. Now the best place to get started is a tutorial provided in the developer docs. And in that tutorial, we are building a discount app for volume discounts. So we're actually using Shopify functions for these volume discounts. And if someone buys, let's say 10 items of the same kind, they would get X percent off. And that tutorial is very detailed. They also explain all the code files, but at the same time, it would now far exceed the scope of this video but we can still have a look at the quick start and see where this is getting at. So let's jump over. Okay, now since this tutorial is written in Rust, we have to install three things up front. Um, the Microsoft C++ build tools, then Rust itself. You can just follow this link here and then download the automated installer. And then we also need a package for Rust. So Cargo is like the package manager for Rust. And this package specifically will then help to compile our Rust code to the needed WebAssembly format. So ideally, the first step would be to install Rust. And once you have that, you can bring up VS Code and then in the terminal, copy and paste this command to install the compiler package. So let's just do that, see if that works. Okay, seems like this has worked perfectly fine. And then we can move on in the tutorial. So there's actually a yarn command to clone all the code for that discount app. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna run that right here. So now it's cloning all the packages. We have to enter an app name. Let's just do discount app. Wait for all the dependencies to install. Okay, so now it downloaded the template and you can see that in my development folder, I now got this discount app folder here. So this is pretty much just a normal app. 
but here we also find the extensions folder which is similar to the checkout extensions that we used in the last video um, but if we go in here and then into the source folder you will find the rust scripts that make up the shopify function and to be honest i'm not a rust expert um, i mean i can i can read most of that but i never wrote like extensive rust code but these files are also explained in detail in the tutorial all right, now for the moment, let's pretend that we've already written our function, we've built it from scratch or whatever you want to accomplish. Then the next step would be to deploy that function. So now I want to navigate into my app folder. So CD discount app. And then I want to run yarn deploy. So let's do that. Here we also got to select our partner account, go through the authentication. Um, I will speed this up a bit. Yes, create a new app in this case. Name can be discount app. So here it's installing and compiling some new packages and dependencies. Let's wait for that. Okay, so now you can see that all the scripts have actually been compiled. And this is pretty interesting because now it says pushing your code to Shopify. So now the function is deployed on Shopify. And now the next thing we have to do is go to in our .env file and then grab the Shopify volume ID from right here. And that has been generated or filled based on our upload right here so now we got to grab this id and with that id in our clipboard we then have to navigate to the web folder right here and then front end pages volume and then new.jsx and in here we got to find the variable function id and then replace that with the id in our clipboard okay let's paste it here save everything and that step is also explained in the tutorial. And now with that in place, we can actually start up or bring up our app server. So let me actually close this out here. And then type yarn run dev. And again, here we have to go through some authentication processes. So this is pretty much the first time we run this, we have to connect the development store and so forth. And as I mentioned before, we have to select the development store under the checkout extension preview, developer preview. And here I just noticed that I need to update my Ngrok authentication token because last time I publicly presented that to you on YouTube. I deleted it afterwards, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> Not that I wouldn't trust you. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so let me just set up this new token here. Okay, so now my Ngrok token is updated. So I will just go ahead and run yarn dev again. Success, tunnel is up and running, perfect. So now the app is served through my local server and we also get this install URL here. So let's just bring that up. So then inside our development store, we would be redirected to this app install screen. So let's go ahead and do that, install app. Okay, and now that the app was successfully installed, we got redirected to this welcome screen here. So this one is built on Polaris and it's just like a regular UI that we all know from traditional apps. But if we now go to the discount settings right here and then create a new discount, we should find one further option coming from our Shopify function. So if we now click on add new volume discount, the interface gets loaded. And as you just saw, it took a bit longer than usual. And that's because the interface to configure our new function is still coming from our local app server. Yeah, so that's what I meant when earlier I said the interface or the settings still have to be served through our own app, but the actual function, the actual function script will then run on Shopify's infrastructure. Okay, so now let's go ahead and then create a discount. So let's just do an automatic one. Let's call it test and minimum quantity of products would be five, let's say, and then 10% discount. Uh, let's save that for now. So here's our newly created discount code. It's called test and then of type volume. And now we can go ahead and preview one of the product pages. And I got a test product in here for five bucks. So then let's actually add that five times. Add to cart. And on the cart page, we should now see that our new discount gets applied automatically. So we get 10% off. And if I raise the quantity, it should still be there. Perfect. And if we go below five, then the card would no longer be eligible for this discount and it gets removed automatically. But now we see that our new discount, or better to say our new function script, works perfectly fine. And this time it's legitimately running on the Shopify infrastructure and that's also why it's so lightning fast. 
How awesome is that? All right, and now that our app is up and running, the next best step would be to follow along with this step-by-step -step guide here, because then you get a very good understanding of how different code files play together and how everything works. And then you could take it from there, make your own tweaks, test things, and build the functions that you want. And yeah, as I said, it's just a little too extensive for a 10 to 15 minute video, but now you have both a good overview and a great starting point. So yeah, I really hope you find some value in that. All right, and that's it for today. I really hope you learned something new. And if you get any questions, leave them in the comment section or check out the resources in the description and then make sure to subscribe because then I'm gonna catch you in the next. Have an amazing day, bye.